Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I've had a lot of people asking me if I can share my story on how I went from opening my channel with no experience on YouTube ever at all uh, to in three months to having over a thousand subscribers and uh, what was it, 300,000 views and all of this in only three months. Here's the first thing. I am not an expert on this. I simply tried some things out, did some things on my channel and had some enormous success. Now this is not a how to get monetized video. This is not a how to get a thousand subscribers video. But no, what this is, this is my story. And the things that I did and implemented uh, at the very start that I was able to see a lot of success on. So the first thing that I did, number one, I found my niche. Now the types of videos that I enjoyed watching on YouTube were homesteading videos, things. I've always been an outdoorsy type of person and so it was pretty easy for me to narrow down my niche of what I wanted my videos to be. So that's the first thing is, is find your niche. Get, get focused on what it is that you're trying to say but for long-term success, it's gotta be something that you're passionate about. It's gotta be something that you care about because when you care about something, other people care about that thing. And when you can put your heart and soul into not making a video, but doing the things that you're passionate about, then people get your heart and soul out of that. And when people connect with people, and when people connect with you, that's when they watch you, that's when they subscribe, that's when they continue to want to build that relationship with you. So really niche down into something that you're passionate about and that can have long-term success for you. And then stay focused. Don't be distracted by every whim that you get. You know, if it, if it doesn't meet your criteria of what your niche is, you know, if, if your niche is, is beauty and fashion, then, you know, maybe taking a hike and going fishing isn't going to be the best video. Now, maybe if you can incorporate some beauty and fashion into that, uh, it, it could work, and, and I'm sure that many people do, uh, but really stay focused and stay consistent with the content that you're putting out so people know what it is that they're gonna get when they turn on your channel. So after you've found your niche, after you've really narrowed down what it is that the, the topic of conversation that you wanna bring up on your channel, you want to set some realistic goals. Uh, a lot of people get this mindset of goals mixed up. They say, well, I want to be monetized in you know, six months. That's not really a goal. Uh, that's what I call an aspiration. Something that you look forward to, something that you, you aspire to. Well, a goal is something that you are able to make happen. You cannot make people subscribe to you in an effective manner. What does work is making a goal of, I am going to make this many videos this month. And if you can work in those parameters with your goals and set realistic goals, then you can be a lot more successful. And then you'll feel a lot better. Hey, you know what? I put out 30 videos this month. I feel great about that. I accomplished my goal. I did what I set out to do. Or maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't accomplish your goal. Maybe you set the goal of 30 videos this month and then you missed your goal by uh, five or six videos. Uh, evaluate, you know, was that a realistic goal, number one, and what could I have done differently to accomplish my goal? If it mean, means reducing the number of videos that you create, then reduce that number. But do it on purpose and make realistic, actionable goals. After you've niched down you've set your expectations, you've set your goals, you really gotta do your research. What have other people done in your niche that have had success? What will you need to be able to accomplish your goal? And that'll tell you how much effort, how much money, how much time is gonna have to go into that. And you can evaluate, is this really worth it? Uh, do your research, understand what gear that it's gonna take, how much time is it gonna take, the locations that it's gonna take, have an opportunity to get creative, see what other people are doing that's successful in that niche. And then don't hold on to things too tightly. Don't write everything down and say, this is the plan, this is what I have to do, this is the way that it's gonna go, and if it doesn't go this way, all hope is lost, and the world is gonna end, and I might as well give up because this is stupid. You know, hold things very, very lightly. Hold it with an open hand because you don't know everything, I don't know everything, I don't even think the creators of YouTube know everything and how YouTube works. So don't think that you can start off the bat 
making a plan that's going to lead you to success when you don't really know what it is that you're even trying to accomplish. Don't be afraid to change directions. You know, if, if you're saying, hey, I'm going to uh, do X, Y, Z, I'm going to make these kind of videos. And then all of a sudden your niche changes from maybe doing outdoor projects to doing more tool reviews and you still like it, you still enjoy it and you're having success. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, this is within the niche that I'm trying to accomplish and it's bringing more success and more happiness. So I'm going to maybe alter some things. I'm going to change some things. I'm going to, you know, drift this direction or that direction, but do it on purpose. Don't just throw everything to the wind and, and let the world control you. You know, be in control of your own destiny. Make a plan, but don't hold the plan so tightly that you can't adjust the plan as you go along. So after we've found our niche, we've managed our expectations, we've formulated a plan, we've done our research, now it's time to put in the work. What I mean by putting in the work is make videos. Make videos. I mean, that's what YouTube is about, is making content and making videos. Uh, I think that I heard this story uh, in a book called Atomic Habits. It was a great book. Uh, I recommend it uh, to anyone that's wanting to learn how to make their lives just that much better uh, and, and, and adjusting things so that you can you can find more success in your everyday life. There was a, a professor by the name of, I think it was Uzelman, Jerry Uzelman, I think it was, and he was an art professor. He taught photography, amongst other things, and in one of his photography classes, he decided to do a little test. He took all the students and he divided the room up in half, and he said, all right, all the students on this half of the room, you are going to be graded on the quality of the perfect picture. You will have to get the composition, the lighting, the, the structure, the content, all the aspects of your photo are going to have to be spot on and perfect in order to get an A. All of their effort had to go into research and learning and understanding and studying what is the perfect picture. What subject should I shoot? What time should I shoot? What, uh, what lighting should I use? What lens should I use? What camera should I use? In order to get an A in this class, they had to have the perfect picture. Now, the other half of the class, they were graded on something completely different. They were graded on quantity of photos submitted. Now, their requirements were 100 pictures submitted in this class would get you an A, 90 would get you a B, 80 would get you a C, and so on. Out of which group? would the better pictures come from? To Professor Uzelman's surprise, the group that had to study and understand and know exactly what the perfect picture would be didn't perform nearly as well as the group that only had to submit a quantity of pictures. Out of the students who submitted the quantity of pictures, they had the highest rate of quality pictures out of all the students in the class with quantity does come quality and if you focus on the quality of something you actually detract from the quality of it so perfection is the antithesis of success that was my approach to or is my approach to my youtube channel when I heard that story, it really hit home with me pretty hard. I mean, it really struck a chord with me because I have an issue with paralysis by perfection. But what that story taught me was, you know what? It is okay to learn as you go. It's okay to get better as you produce things. I mean, the world is full of theories on how to do something, but what it really boils down to is the people that do the work and the people that do not. The people that do the work see success. The people that do not do the work. They don't have success. Or at least they don't have long-term sustainable success. So YouTube is not any different. It's not any different than taking a picture. It's making those videos. And you can come up with all the theories on how to make your video or the content that your video needs to have or what kind of thumbnail or all of this theory that goes into YouTube. But here's the deal. I've seen success with people doing all of those things or none of them. Uh, some of the, the videos with most success on YouTube are the worst produced and the, the sorriest 
excuse of a video that I've ever seen, but they have success because they're out there. Test for yourself what works well for you and make lots and lots of videos. The more videos you make, the more people can see who you are, the more people can see your content, the more you're going to strike a chord with somebody. But if you don't make that content, if you don't make enough content, then the chances of you actually hitting that stride are few and far between. So when I set out to make my channel, I had more time than I do now. Let's put it that way. <laughs> we were in the middle of lockdown. I was bored out of my mind. So I went out and I grabbed my chainsaw and I cut down a tree because my wife wanted some raised garden beds. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll bring my camera along uh, and, uh, and record this. So I cut down the trees, I recorded it, and I posted it on my personal YouTube channel. And all of our friends laughed and had a good watch. And, and so the next day I, I made a, another video on cutting up the lumber and, and making the beds, or I can't remember exactly what it was on. And it just kind of progressed. And I said, you know what? I'm really enjoying this. I'm really having a good time. Uh, I think that I want to make a channel. And so I talked with my wife. I talked with my kids. I, I made sure that they were okay with it first. And I wanted it to be a, a family thing where we could all get involved because I love my family. I'm passionate about them. And if I'm passionate about them, I want to be able to share that passion with other people. But then when I started my channel, I said, you know what? I'm going to make as many videos as I can. And my goal that first month was to make at least one video a day. And it drove my wife crazy, but I managed to make one video a day. And then the next month I continued to make one video a day. And so within two months I had 60 something videos, uh, within three months, but I had 70 something videos. As I put up more and more videos, I got a video that was kind of in my niche that blew up and took off. We put in uh, an above ground pool that we bought from Walmart and uh, people were going to YouTube to figure out how to put this pool up and I put up the pool and I posted it online and I made a, a, a video that was mildly entertaining and somewhat informative and people watched it. And so when I saw that success, I said, you know what, I need to capitalize on that success. So that's, that's probably the last thing that you want to focus on is when you do find success, when you find those things, hey, people are really interested in this. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and turn everything and just do pool videos, but make some more content around that. You know, I made a content on how to clean the filter, and then I made some content on what my thoughts were and how difficult it was to put up, and I made a video on, on how to test the pool with different chemicals. All of those videos kind of trickled down off of the success of that one video. But if I hadn't been making lots, lots of videos, if I hadn't been pursuing the, the passions and the things that we were doing around here on the homestead, if I hadn't been uh, focused on learning and growing and doing better with each and every video, uh, then I never would have found that success. And then the very last thing that I think contributed to my success probably more than anything else was I found a community. I found a community of like-minded people that were creating their own YouTube channels around their homestead. I found a community of like-minded people that wanted to, to grow in the things that they were doing and share that with other people. Hey, these people have become my friends and I enjoy watching them. I enjoy watching their channels grow. They enjoy watching my channel grow. We, we celebrate each other's successes. We get invested in each other and we, we encourage each other and we help each other out. And more than anything else in the, in, in the entire YouTube platform, I think that that community that I found is worth more than any of the, the monetization that I've seen. So that's my story. That's, that's how I went from starting a YouTube channel to having over a thousand subscribers in just three months, doing it organically, doing it for real. I haven't paid a single person to watch my videos. I have not subscribed so that somebody else would subscribe to my videos. I've simply been a real person in real life, talking with other real people, engaging in community, creating lots and lots of videos, doing my research and having a great time doing it. So I hope that you found this video helpful and or informative. I hope that you can find as much success, but more than that, I hope that you can find some joy in making these videos or, or running your YouTube channel. And if you don't, man, don't be afraid to, 
to, to let it go because that's probably more important than any other thing. So I really appreciate you watching this video. If you'd like to see more of what we got going on on the homestead, hit the subscribe button and uh, uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.